Welcome, and thank you everyone for joining us for this concise and informative discussion by Dr. Michael Wolf. Dr. Wolf, you have many degrees and certifications in the areas of nutrition and health, including two board, board certifications in nutrition. You are a doctor of chiropractic with a master's in nutrition, and you are a certified nutritional specialist. That's right. You have published successful books on natural health, and right now we will be discussing cancer and nutrition. Okay. Okay, so there's a question for Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie has breast cancer and would like to know the best diet and nutrients to take for this. Mm -hmm. She feels that her cancer doctor does not believe or understand nutrition, but to Marjorie, nutrition makes sense. Mm -hmm. Dr. Walt, please include in your response what role nutrition has, if any, in cancer treatment and prevention. Okay. Thanks for the question, Marjorie. I'm sorry to hear about what you're going through right now. Um, th this question of cancer is, is very controversial and nutrition. Um, we know, and we've said this in other videos, Sonny, that uh, in most medical schools, on average, uh, there's between 20 and 30 hours of nutrition study, so it's not a lot of hours at all when we're dealing with you know thousands upon thousands of hours, for example, that someone with my credentials has. Uh, so it, when an oncologist is faced with a patient saying, what do you think about nutrition, and they have very little background in nutrition, and they're trying to save your life with chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, um, I can actually understand why they would not be so for nutrition. Why would a doctor be for nutrition if they don't know it? Mm -hmm. We would hope at the very least they might say, well, you know, there's something to that, but you need to go to another nutrition specialist for that, just like if you had an OBGYN problem, you wouldn't talk to a dentist. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has their specialties. Um, but I will tell you this, that it's not my opinion, Sonny, that nutrition can play a major role in both prevention and treatment of various cancers. Now, when we say cancer, you know, there are over 800 varieties of cancer and then more individual varieties among different people. So we can uh, stage various uh, cancers, stage one, stage two, for example, but even two or 10 people with the same stage do have variations. Mm -hmm. So um, the nutrition needs to pay attention to that. So oncologists, in a nutshell, um, some are not pro-nutrition simply because they don't know it. So it usually means, here's a scenario, a patient comes to me and they say, Dr. Wald, as you said, you know, as Marjorie said, you know, my, my oncologist doesn't seem to believe in this. So um, sometimes it takes a conversation from me with an oncologist so they, they realize that, oh, so this is actually uh, scientific and we can do this. And they're, they're concerned, as they should be, that there are no negative interactions between the chemo or um, their surgery or their radiation, depending on what a person gets, uh, and nutrition. And since they don't know nutrition, of course they're going to be limited with that. So I think I've emphasized that enough. <clears throat> But on the National Library of Medicine and also on the Cochrane database, the two largest medical database for nutrition studies and medical studies in nutrition and cancer, the amount of, of data there is um, beyond my ability to even read it all. That's how much there is on the positive benefits of nutrition in the form of nutritional supplements and diet. So commonly in cancer, you have a hyperutilization of nutrition, which if you don't match the nutrition needs of the patients, they can become cachexic or they can lose their lean mass. Mm. The more the lean mass is lost, that's directly proportional to poor outcomes. So we need to do things to improve upon that. Sometimes, Sonny, I see some oncologists uh, recommending patients to a dietitian. That's about as far as it would go, but I hardly ever see even that. Mm -hmm. And as someone who is also a licensed certified uh, dietitian, uh, we do not learn a whole bunch of nutrition and cancer beyond some very basic things. But I, through um, teaching others about cancer nutrition and, and writing my various nutrition books and treating patients for you know about 30 years, have found uh, through the literature that there's quite a lot that we can do. So for each person with cancer, what we want to do is look at their diets. We want to look at what medications they're taking, uh, what forms of um, oncological treatments they're getting, and we want to support those treatments. Depending on the cancer and their and its stage, so some forms of cancer can be um, helped greatly through nutrition. In other conditions, uh, it, it may be too far gone to, to, make, to be of any help. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally speaking, if we, if we uh, assess a person correctly, and if we have the proper um, um, coordination with, uh, with oncologists and myself, for example, uh, we can do quite a lot to reduce the risk uh, that, that patients with cancer have of dying of malnutrition, which is entirely, as I said, nutritional, mm -hmm. and the secondary infections 
that can be from the immunosuppressive medications used in cancer, they really carry their own detrimental risks as well. And nutrition in many cases can offset a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So nutrition when done right is not gonna grow the cancer. It's actually gonna do quite the opposite. And uh, again, that literature is out there, uh, which is why I can say it on a public forum like this, because it's an important thing that needs to be proven out, but it's, it's been done. Sometimes, Sonny, I hear that some oncologist patients will relate to me. They'll say that their oncologists say that um, their nutrition, if you take these supplements and these dietary changes, you're gonna interfere with what they're doing. Um, so I take that seriously. And I look at it, even if I think it's not happening, and if, and if I look and it's not happening, then great. Um, and, but there are cases where nutrition can interfere with the standard oncological treatments. And for people who decide to take those therapies, we, have, we want them to work. So we, we coordinate the nutrition around that and in support of that. And sometimes patients will say to me, I am, I am not going to do uh, cancer therapies, I'm not, I don't want chemo on the body, I don't want this, I don't want that. So I make sure that they have the proper education by their oncologist by asking them specific questions and then letting them know that nutrition is not a substitute for the standard of care in, in cancer therapy, officially speaking, but the science is there, uh, it is a, a great support, it can extend life, it can improve the quality of life, nutrition when properly done can remove uh, and reduce side effects. So again, and then, then we take the step further, depending on the cancer, there are certain nutrients and nutritional compounds that are more or less needed. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I determine with a patient based on what does the medical and nutrition literature say about the use of nutrition and supplements in general. And then I take that individual patient's condition and all the uh, information I know about that, including the labs and the, and the various scans, whether it's a PET scan or MRIs or CT scans, for example and then um, look at their laboratory work and individualize the nutritional needs there and then put that all together to personalize it. Mm -hmm. It must be personalized. Because any number of these books, Sonny, can talk about all these nutrients and diets uh, for cancer, but none of them are based on the individual needs of each person who is coming to me with cancer. Mm -hmm. So anything you read in the book at, the, at best is just a rough guide to have you be aware of what may be out there for you to have the proper discussion with a trained healthcare professional. And that's essentially uh, what, we, what we do and how we approach cancer. Okay, great, Dr. Wald, thank you for that response. That was helpful.